warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another academic event organized by the English Education Department of Unif Peristas Maria Kudus. Today we have a special program with the title of the program Stadium General and Workshop of Creative Writing. And today's topic of the discussion will be a little creativity for the soul with the special guest speaker, Ibu Henny Erawati, Mhum, PhD. Before we proceed to the main program, please allow me to read the rundown of the program this morning. The first program is opening, and then <coughs> it will be continued by singing the national anthem and Mars of UMK. And the third, it will be speech from the head of English department, the head of English education department of Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, Universitas Maria Kudus, Ibu Rusiana, SPD, MPD. And the fourth program will be the main session or the main agenda. It is Stadium General and Workshop of Creative Writing. And the fifth will be singing Hymna OMK, and the last one is closing. Well, ladies and gents, now let's open this morning program by prayer together according to our own and belief. And for those who are Muslims, please follow me to recite Basmalah together. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's proceed to the next program, singing national anthem and march of UMK.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to make this program more bright, more fr fruitful, let's listen to the speech from the head of English Education Department, Ibu Rusiana SPD MPD. Please join me in welcoming Ibu Rusiana. The floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Pak Agung. Uh, good morning, everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. First of all, let's thank God for the endless blessings so that today, June the 3rd, 2022, we can gather here for a study in general, a little creativity for the soul, a creative writing workshop with the great speaker of the day, Ibu Heni Hirawati, and whom PhD. Uh, our colleague from University of Sananta Dharma. And secondly, I'd like to extend my gratitude to the speaker of the day, Ibu, Ibu Heni Hirawati and Mumu PhD. Uh, we are so thrilled to have you today, Ibu. Welcome to PBI UMK virtually. We are waiting for your visit some other time, Ibu, when the pandemic uh, has been over. And I think now we've seen that uh many universities have already opened online offline classes and we do hope the same that next semester we will have offline class and this cooperation between umk and usader and this is the nickname of our university Cebu, yeah <laughs> i hope that the students are, are familiar with that nickname umk and usader and Universitas Maria Kudus that this cooperation, we will have another program, another fruitful program, uh, future ahead offline. And today it is the, I like, I would like to borrow from Batafi's word, yeah, it is the virgin activity, it is the virgin program of the cooperation. And thanks for the MPKM program, because of that program, so we can have uh, this good opportunity for having another colleague from another university and next uh, next month of uh, August, yeah, in August, Pak Safi also will be giving uh, a talk in Usadar online. Okay. And thank you also for all of the team for making this happen. Thank you for all my colleagues and also the students. Thank you for being highly motivated and uh, enthusiastic joining this program. And today's topic is so crunchy. <laughs> it's uh, new for me, Bueni. Uh, I've heard about creative writing, but I've never been um, into a talk about creative writing. So it is my first time and I'm expecting to, to learn a lot from you. Uh, so do my students. So uh, I hope we will learn something uh, from Ibu Heni and we can just uh, practice what you will be sharing today, this morning. Yeah, because we haven't got the course for creative writing. Ibu, here we have academic writing and the lecturer is Pak Muhammad, uh, Pak Mushawe, yeah. Mushawe is not Muhammad, Ibu. So no. it is Mushawe, no. but it's not Muhammad, yeah. 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 Okay. So, yeah, I think that's all that I can share, that I can uh, say today for opening this a workshop. It's study in general, but it, it will be a talk and also a little workshop from Buheni. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's all. That's enough of me. Thank you. And thank you again, Ibu Heni, and for all the participants. Uh, enjoy the talk and enjoy the workshop. Yeah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi Thank you, Pak Agung. Thank you very much. Ibu Rusiana for the motivational speech. Well, ladies and gents, we come to what we are waiting for. What is uh, special this morning? Yeah, It is an event called Stadium General and Workshop of Creative Writing. And the topic today is a little creativity for the soul. And our guest speaker, the special one, it is Ibu Heni Erawati Mhum PhD. And today's workshop 
and discussion will be handled by uh, the great moderator, Bapak Muhammad Mohsyafi'i, Dr. Andes Mohsyafi'i, MPD. To Bapak Mohsyafi'i, MPD, and Ibu Heni Erawati, MHUM PhD, the floor is yours. Thank you, Pak Agung Dwi Nur Cahyo. Uh, honorable Speaker, Ms. Heni Irawati, PhD, the Head of English Education Department of UMK, Ibu Rusiana, Academic Staff of English Education Department, and All beloved and happy audience. All of you, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I am Pa Safi, the moderator of this, this session. And in this Stadium General, yeah, we are going to talk about great, two great concepts, yeah. creativity and the soul. Yeah. Creativity belongs to one of soft skills in life. And I think using my own words, if we are creative, it means we are having choices, we have choices, we have alternatives, we have new ideas for doing things. If we are creative, hopefully we will be optimistic, yeah. adaptive, solutive, transformational, inspiring and innovative also happier and healthier in short we are rich in new ideas it is using my own words yeah. when we are creative accordingly we can handle things well and we don't easily give up when problems come because we are creative and creativity should make our life easier, happier and more successful. Yeah. And I read some lines in the internet, creativity nourishes our souls, fit our souls. Yeah. Uh, let me quote a line from Rose Candela. It is an author and an artist. Yeah. She says that creativity, creativity maybe comes in the form of a canvas painting. Yeah. Or maybe it comes into the form of new business or career path. And every creativity yeah, every creativity will listen, answer, and let go of the song of our great creativities, yeah. of our creations. Yeah. And our soul songs, our soul songs, knows the way. Yeah. For example, uh, Didi Nini Tawak channels his creativity by dancing, maybe Avandi painting, Rudi Hartono playing badminton, and many more examples. And in the context of writing courses in our department, in English Education Department, both in UMK and in USADA, I think, yeah, uh, in this session, 
we will motivate students ya yeah, to let your creativity students creativity become your works in the form of maybe an essay a paper yeah. or a PKM project program kreativitas mahasiswa project uh, Bu Heni uh, we have a good news from UMK related to PKM uh, the number of proposals funded by the DICTI is the highest the highest number in central java <laughs> yeah. congratulations yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. really great yeah and also we expect students yeah channels their creativity to become a book maybe a final project at the end of this program in s1 program or maybe you can put your creativity of using words into a saying or a proverbs yeah a poem like what ibu henny did in uh drawers poem <laughs> drawers, yeah 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 or maybe you can create a short story compose a song lyric a novel maybe or just a diary students can do them offline and online or both yeah on, offline on online or both online and online yeah well happy audience this morning we are lucky we are fortunate to have with us an expert and a model for writing creatively and the beauty on the line will be presenting a stadium general entitled little creativity for the soul maybe i'm a bit curious why the soul is put between quotation mark <laughs> maybe later on Fu Heni will explain to us okay audience please welcome Ms. Heni Erawati PhD but before uh, we proceed to the Stadium General let me just uh, read or just present a short CV of Ms. Heni Erawati Ms. Heni Erawati PhD is an academic staff of English Language Education Study Program or PPE in Sanadat Dharma University in Kota Kudek. Yeah. She was born in Salatiga on October 11 or November 10. I have no idea. <laughs> you can clarify. In 1971. Yeah. She got her undergraduate degree in 1994 in Satya Wacana Christian, Christian University in Salatiga and then her master degree in 2003 in Universitas Gajah Mada uh, and I think Bu Weni uh, is in the was in the same in the same batch with Pak Fajar Ibu ya Pak Fajar is our lecturer ya yeah, in UMK he is now studying in UGM Ibu ya yeah. With him like <laughs> okay. and Bu Heni got her doctoral degree in Monash University Australia in Faculty of Education and I think I don't have to read a long list of words from Bu Heni yeah it's quite a long list yeah. but the the words covering conference 
presentations and workshops, publications like journal articles, conference publications, book chapters, and textbooks. And she also composed some creative publications and doing collaborative research and reading all the works. I can say that most of her works deal with writing and creativity aspects. Yeah. So I think uh, this morning we have the best person yeah, to talk about creativity and the soul. Yeah. I think that's all my opening for this session and please welcome Ibu Heni Herawati to give the Stadium General. Ibu, you have 45 minutes until one hour uh, uh, to have the presentation and after that we are going to have uh, one question and answer sessions. Ibu Heni, the line is yours. Yeah. Thank you for the kind introduction, Pak Shafi'i. Good morning. Ibu Rusiana, uh, Pak Agung, and Pak Shafi'i, and also lovely students there who attend this uh, workshop, talk and workshop, actually. So it is really a great honor for me to be invited to Universitas Muria Kudus. Hopefully, one day I can go there in person. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, uh, to save time, I think I should start right away, if you don't mind. Is it okay, Bu Rusiana? May I share screen? Yeah. Sure, Ibu. Uh, sorry. Uh, do you see the full screen? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, right. Thank you. So good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, this morning, I'm going to talk a bit about a uh, little creativity for the soul. Uh, it's and we'll do a little a uh, little writing at the end. Okay. So uh, hopefully. Hopefully it works because um, I I hope we can have more time, but we have two hours and that should be enough. Okay, so I hope what we we'll do this morning uh, will be useful for all of the stu students as well. Uh, this is my plan. So um, I'm going to talk a bit about creativity and then about creative writing and academic writing as uh, usually both are, you know, um, contrasted. And then I'm going to talk about uh, how creative writing skills uh, can enliven our uh, academic writing. And then uh, let's do a little practice then. So uh, I like to start today's uh, talk with a poem written by Professor Alan Malley. I love this poem because it describes exactly what creativity is. Let me read out because I think it's a bit too small for some of you. The title is Outside the Box. Being outside the box was comfortable, warm and cozy. We curled up with cushions of routine, wedded with words, blanketed by books, swaddled in certainties. A bit stuffy, perhaps, and we sometimes felt cramped, but never mind. We were so used to it that it felt normal and, as I said, comfortable. Out here, we are exposed and cold winds blow. We need to hold on tight keep our eyes open for sudden snow squalls, hidden crevices. It is a precarious existence now, but here we can move and breathe. 
see clear to the far horizon. And if we come to a cliff, we know we can step off it into empty air, trusting it to bear us up. We have no fear of falling. So this is exactly what creativity is, as if we let ourselves explore our creative side, we probably, we don't have fear of falling from the cliff. Okay. And, but usually we are so used to be in the comfort zone inside the box, which is warm and cozy. Uh, so we tend not to do things uh, that are risky probably, and that we know that it's not comfortable out there. But to be creative means to be brave, to take the risk and uh, to stand on the cliff and then trust that if you uh, just step off it, you wouldn't fall. Okay, so that's that's the I lo really love this poem because of uh, the spirit. But so creative writing uh, involves uh, the use of uh, language uh, creatively. But what is creativity or being creative actually? Now I actually ask you to uh, fill in. Hello. Yes. Okay. So to to um, to answer a question there in the link that has been shared previously, uh, what comes to your mind when you hear the word creative or creativity? But unfortunately, I haven't got any answer for that question. So I'm going to just share it once again here. So give you a minute or two to. Uh, quickly answer what word comes to your mind when you hear the word creativity you have three options uh, no three uh, chances to um, enter three words i mean but uh, you can enter one if you only have one word in mind so you can uh, type in up to three entries Check again. Uh, not yet, I guess. Uh, I got the one for the creative writing, but not yet for the creativity or being creative. Should we wait? Mas Umar, can you help me to reshare again in the chat box for the for the three links, maybe? Oh yes, probably. Yes. Uh share them uh because there are three, right? That's the, the first that I share. Uh, well, dear students, please uh, participate in filling out the Mentimeter and the link has been in the chat box. There are three links and this is the first one, yeah, Ibu? This is the first, yes. yes. I guess the first. Maybe I should check. Uh, yeah, have you got some answers, Ibu? Uh, not yet. <laughs> not yet for this one. But uh, I'm going to share... I have sent mine, I think. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, okay, yes, Ibu. Uh, let me share again. I'll send it to the uh, chat box. Yes. Uh, that one? Let me try, Ibu. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, I got the second. Uh, 
and I got the third as well. Okay. All right, uh, here in the chat box, I see different views by Pa Shafi'i. Uh, new things, new ways. Thank you, Pa. Let me try to copy that from. Okay, just to. I'll share my screen again. It's the second link, Ibu. Uh, oh, probably. Uh, oh, oh it's, it's still the first? That's the first. Oh, it's still the first. That's yeah. the first, yes. that's Because I haven't got any response. I don't know why. But that's OK, Ibu. Uh, yeah, uh, let me share the result that I got from, if you don't mind. The result that I got from another uh, workshop. Okay, unfortunately, I do. I haven't received any uh, notifications from uh, you. So I'm going to use this one if that's okay. So this one was, uh, I got this from uh, the previous workshop that I ran. So uh, some words, probably some of you also have, have mentioned this or have these things in mind, like the words imagination, idea, new ways, I guess something new, but Chef E mentioned uh, something new. Or probably if you want to uh, drop some words in the chat box, uh, that's fine. I can have a look as well. So as uh, some words that come up uh, when uh, we hear the word creative or creativity, uh, imagination, uh, innovation, uh, unique idea, or improve something useful, Okay, so useful, out of the box, uh, what else? Smart, artwork, extraordinary. The one, if, if we get a, a, big, uh, a big word here, it means that many of the participants um, type in or uh, uh, type in this word, okay? Imagination and then idea, it looks like innovation. And there are some other words around it related to this. Okay, so maybe later I can check again of your responses and then uh, replace this one with uh, the ones that you have submitted. So creativity um, is uh, the generation of novel and appropriate ideas or products. So if we look at literature about creativity, these are uh, words that are related to creativity. And if we go back and see the words came up, uh, maybe yours also related to these words. You see the uh, the words that I, highlight, uh, okay. I highlighted here. Uh, these are the words that are mentioned as well in the uh, previous in the Mentimeter, okay? So novel, appropriate ideas, and Mali mentioned about the, or defines creativity as uh, the notion of creativity comprises 
core ideas such as making something new, perceiving old things in new ways. Okay, Pak Shafi mentioned about new ways here, new connections, finding new connections or evoking pleasurable uh, surprise. Also, putting elements together to form a novel. Novel means new, coherent whole, or make an original product. Again, there's another word here coming up, uh, original. So novel or new, appropriate, and then new ways, new connections, uh, surprise here, original. And also novelty refers to the idea that the product of creativity has to be something different, new or innovative. Okay, so these are some of the experts in, in creativity, how they perceive uh, uh, what is considered as uh, creative or creativity. Uh, let me uh just show you one of the theories related to creativity i'm not going to talk about theories but it's good if we uh understand uh this amabilis uh, componential theory of creativity uh, in this theory she explains that the production of creativity is influenced by three components uh, namely one's expertise. So expertise here refers to one's uh, intellectual or knowledge, uh, one's creative thinking skills. So uh, flexibility in thinking and, and in uh, having an open-minded mind, uh, this contributes to this creative uh, thinking skills. And the last one is motivation. And to be uh, specific, uh, the intrinsic motivation usually contributes more to the production of creativity. So when we create something, when uh, someone produces creativity, there are these components that uh, contribute to the production. Our knowledge, our skill, our thinking, creative yeah. thinking skills, and our motivation to uh, do the thing or to in that uh, particular area. Now, uh, some people say that I'm not creative, and then uh, so I cannot do that. I cannot write poems. I cannot uh, uh, invent something new. I because I'm not so creative. So uh, or I'm not creative. Uh, according to some experts, um, it's creativity is actually a skill, and as a skill, it can be developed. So this is uh, a, a theory by uh, Piketo and Kaufman, the developmental trajectory of creativity, in which creativity is seen as a continuum. So it's not like that you are creative or not creative, but uh, there are levels of creativity from mini C, which is like personal creativity, everyday creativity, to little C, which is um, a kind of creativity that is appreciated by other people, and uh, professional creativity, in which uh, the level is when you have published uh, a book, for instance. And then the big C. Big C is the, of course, uh, uh, the creative people like Mozart, like also all the big names, okay, Hawthorne, all, all the big inventors and writers. And so those who have been tested by uh, society and as well as time that their products, their creative products have been uh, appreciated and highly valued by people. Now, it from mini C to little C to pro C, what we need to do is practice. And of course, from mini C to little C, we need feedback from expert companion, according to the theory. Uh, the expert companion can be someone who is like, if you want to learn uh, practice, uh, if you want to practice writing poems, then you probably uh, talk and, and learn from a poet directly. Or you can have in the context of schools, then we can have the teachers as the expert companion who will provide feedback. 
Of course, in addition to that, peers as well can give feedback to the development of creativity. So uh, creativity in language, we talked about creativity in language right? Uh, this morning, not in other areas. Now, creativity in language enables us to create new associations, playful combinations, and new meanings. So, so this is what is um, what we have uh, in the context of language. Now, I also ask you to uh, drop your ideas or opinions about uh, what comes to your mind when you hear the word creative, uh, sorry, creative writing. So this is what I got. Uh, hang on. Uh, excuse me, what about the first one? Have, uh, you haven't got any answer yet. Uh, for the first? Yes, because I, I have submitted to us and also some ah. too. Okay. I'm afraid that there's something maybe, the link, maybe. Yeah, probably boo. Uh, but I got the one for the second, so I'm going to put that one on the slide now. Um, let me check again, Ibu, for the first. Okay. But to save time, I'm going to just continue with this. Uh, Give me a minute to share my screen again. Sorry. Uh, okay. So this is the result that I got. Do you see my screen? Not yet. Not yet. No. Not yet. What do you see? Yeah. Uh, is this the page from the... Do you see the page from the Mentimeter? Yeah. Yes. So what comes to your mind when you hear the words creative writing? Uh, these are the words that... But some of you probably uh, misunderstood the uh, uh, instruction. So uh, I think they key in or they enter the names, uh, but I got some, some words here like imagination. So creative writing re related to writing innovatively, writing for literary work, make a, a good word, okay. Uh, Tulisan creative, okay. Beautiful poem, yes, creativity. It has something to do with creativity. It has something to do with uh, or new or unique writing with new ideas. Okay, so so that's uh, that's the those are the words. Now I'd like to go back. Yeah. 
Sorry, I need to swap. Do you see full screen, Bapak Ibu? No. Yeah. Uh, do you see the full full screen? Yes, you do. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> because in mine, it's 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 not full. So, what is creative writing? What comes to your mind when you hear the words creative writing? Those are the words uh, came up from students and probably from some of the lectures as well. So. Um, Let's see then, what is creative writing? Uh, creative writing, if you see the definition, it's uh, creating an imaginative, original, literary production or composition. And anything where the purpose is to express thoughts, feelings, and emotions, rather than to simply convey information. So that is the uh, difference. Okay, so if you see, uh, do you see full screen now? Sorry, Bapak Ibu. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I swap. So again, uh, what is creative writing? It is creating an imaginative, I highlight these words, imaginative, original, and then uh, these are also important, express thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Now, these are the uh, what are emphasized with creative writing. Uh, it's not just conveying information, but uh, more importantly, it expresses thoughts, feelings, and emotions. So creative writing is the production of text which have an aesthetic rather than a purely informative uh, instrumental or pragmatic uh, purpose. So these are examples of students' writings uh, when taking creative uh, writing class. So again, the emphasis here is on the um, uh, aesthetic rather than purely informative, uh, instrumental or pragmatic purpose, according to Professor Malley. So what is academic writing then, because that's uh, another thing that we're going to connect with uh, creative writing this morning. Uh, academic writing refers to writing which communicates ideas, information, and research to the wider academic community. And if you see some of the characteristics on the right there, I found in the internet, academic writing is used in research projects, conference papers, essays, abstracts, reports, uh, and the like, and uses formal objective concise language, does not use slang, does not use contractions, and always uses referencing and citations. Now, I also have got the result of this. Do you think a good academic writing needs creative skills? Sorry, creative writing skills. I found the result that most most thing most of you think that it's uh, it's I think let me check again yes okay so let me just copy and then put it here. Sorry for taking time for this because uh, usually uh, I got the result before, so, but it, it's okay, it, it works. Okay, so I got the result anyway. We can discuss about this. All right. Go. Okay, my screen again. Recording in
Yes. So do you see the result? So I got two results here. Uh, yes, okay, 11, and then just one maybe. And none of you uh, chose no. So it means that, uh, that you also agree that uh, creative, a good academic essay needs creative writing skills. All right, so um, what, and, and also this also, uh, this idea is also confirmed by some studies. I only screenshot two of them. So the, this one is the integration of creative writing into academic writing skills in EFL classes and creative writing as the best way to improve writing skills of students. So only those two, but actually there are many more studies conducted uh, uh, found that the that creative writing skills are useful to enhance students uh, academic writing so creative writing by definition involves being creative right uh, making things up about letting your imagination run wild and essays are about being factual uh, and objective communicating ideas and arguments uh, in the clearest way possible and attempting to you know add or to enhance the reader's knowledge rather than rather than inviting them uh, to imagine uh, and also uh, there are some language features like literary devices that are often associated with creative writing rather than uh, to academic writing. But, but uh, I put a question here. Uh, are there any writing techniques that we can borrow from creative writing to help make our essays more interesting and original? So in this uh, occasion, I'd like to focus on three only due to the limitation of time. The first one is inciting inspirations, how we can borrow creative writing uh, techniques in inciting inspirations uh, to write and developing an attention grabbing opening. That's the second one. And the third one is using metaphors and similes, how we can, uh, uh, insert metaphors and similes in the in our writing as well. So the first one is inciting inspirations. What do let's see? What do writers say about writing first? Uh, what do they say? Because uh, if we want to be writers, then uh, we have to learn from them, right? Let's say what they say about writing. Ray Bradfully, for instance, uh, he said, you must write every single day of your life. Uh, Arthur Haley said, I set myself 600 words a day as a minimum output, regardless of the weather, my state of mind, or if I'm sick or well. And Sylvia Plath uh, stated, the worst enemy of creativity is self-doubt. So becoming a writer means being creative enough to uh, find the time and the place in your life for writing because uh, I know that uh, that happens to me as well. Okay, I found it sometimes I want to write but I don't have time to write. Looks like, you know, we have too many activities, other activities, deadlines to meet and uh, we don't have time to practice writing. But if you want to be a writer, if you want to develop your writing skills, then that is the thing that you have to do. Practice and determination to make the time to write, okay, to practice writing. So basically, we have to build a writing habit, uh, even though some of you might think that, uh, okay, but I don't know what to write about. But actually, everybody has a story to tell, and so do you. So anything. So actually, if you uh, are interested, if you want to develop our writing skills, uh, this 
is the thing that we have to do that is to build up uh, the discipline in writing. Writers write, so we should write every day. Uh, every day doesn't mean that uh, we, you have to write like a full, a complete poem or short story or essay or finished, no. Okay, so just a little bit spend like, even 10 minutes will do. So this works uh, to, I know that not everyone likes to uh, keep a journal, but uh, this helps, okay? The, the, keeping a journal helps a lot, helps writers as well. First to jot down ideas when they come to you. So you just carry a small note or now you have your smartphone uh, students. So you just type in a few lines Okay, in your cell phone, in the note, uh, or even you can record ideas there. Okay, so keeping a journal here is now not limited to a notebook like this and a pen, but it can be your laptop, it can be your smartphone as well. But uh, have something to jot down ideas when they come to you, because uh, when when uh, you you know, the ideas uh, cross your mind, then you don't uh, write that down directly or very often we forget, okay? Second, note down images or words or phrases as you watch the people and the world around you. So note down images, words, phrases as you watch the people and the world around you. So I, uh, uh, one of my, participants in my study uh, told me that she liked going home from campus by taking public transportation because by doing so she uh, could actually watch people okay watch people uh, around around her rather than just riding her motorcycle home uh, directly so it's uh, it's also when she watched people, when she uh, looked at uh, or found words or phrases that are useful, that are interesting from the books that she read, she noted that down, okay? And that helps because one day uh, when we want to write and then we remember the words and we can recall, we can use the words as well, okay? So, and uh, to copy out writings that appeal you, uh, I also like to do this when I read books or poems and I found them interesting or, uh, you know, very nice, very nice words. I usually copy out the writings, copy out writings plus the writers, of course. So because these are for our inspirations later on when we want to write. Uh, it's, it's not that I uh, we copy that one and use as our own, that will be plagiarism, right? But um, we can use others' works as inspiration. So we can note that down with the writers as well, and then uh, we can use them as inspirations later. And you can use the journal to write daily entries. Uh, don't worry about the topics. You don't have to write heavy topics or you know, very, you know, very creative one, you can actually write about simple one, daily activities or daily impressions or daily feelings, uh, your feelings at that time, your observation about people around. So anything, okay, but uh, writing that down in your journal will switch on the, writing button okay so it's it's like uh, we have our mind okay the writing button ready all the time so practice that just write a few lines every day just five minutes ten minutes will do now write something every day and even if you think it's terrible i it happened to me many times, retain it until the next day or the next week or maybe the next month. Uh, you can begin by rereading what you wrote yesterday or the, you know, the previous one. At the very least, it will encourage you to rewrite. 
and at best it will be much better than you thought and spur you on to write more and another important thing is you have to share your works okay if uh, in this is my context here is in uh, creative writing but also for academic writing you can uh, share your your writings uh, to not just to your lecturers or you know students in the class but if you have um you know social media i don't know what you have now with young generations like maybe some of you have a blog or or facebook facebook is old so old days people say okay i mean my students that that they they don't use facebook anymore <laughs> so they prefer things like instagram or twitter okay or, or use use other medias to share your works it will spur your um, motivation as well to write more now read uh, do you think it is important for writers to read do you think it is important for writers to read yes sir. what do you think absolutely i think yes yes absolutely yes so uh, it's reading can improve writing and writing can improve reading. Uh, but really Renandia mentioned that uh, many times, okay? And also other experts in uh, reading and writing. And uh, Professor Paul Nation stated that if learners notice that there is something they don't know when writing, they later read like a writer, giving attention to how others say what they wanted to say. So reading is like breathing in. It's like collecting uh, ammunition <laughs> or collecting words, uh, styles. Uh, we learn from the writers and writing is like breathing out. So it's like breathing in and breathing out. So we, it, it cannot be separate. You cannot just breathe in all the time uh, if, if you want to produce something, but and and writing is like breathing out. You cannot breathing. You know, you cannot breathe out unless you have something. Okay, so so uh, this is I think a very interesting uh, statement by Pam Allen that reading is like breathing in and writing is like breathing out. So uh, this is what you need to do, or what this is what students need to do: read and read and read. So whatever your writing interest may be, fiction or non-fiction, literary novels or specialist articles, poems or drama, you should read anything and everything in your chosen genre. I guess Burusiana will agree with me <laughs> because this is like extensive reading, right? So it's the that's the spirit. Uh, and it's not just for the reading skill, but it's it's more than that. If you are interested in writing in a particular genre, then you have to read uh, widely, especially you have to read in the area of the chosen genre. Now I'm I'm um, I am more into poems. So I like reading poems by Indonesian writers and also uh, foreign writers. So any any poems uh, will be uh, interesting okay, for me. Uh, when I read poems, I read with a writer's eye. I learn from them. If I found oh how they can use this unique metaphor, I learn from someone, a colleague. Um, he actually he hasn't published anything but his poems were so so good okay uh but he writes in indonesian language but he used unusual unusual uh, metaphors so you wouldn't think about that okay you wouldn't you wouldn't think that you will compare those two things for instance that but but uh, he is able to present that and make us think in a different way, because we see things differently uh, by reading the lines. Okay, so if you are interested in writing a particular genre, even if you are interested in nonfiction, right, right, research, okay, research papers, then do read in uh, you know th that area learn how the writers uh, present the discussion 
read with a righteous eye. Now, let me ask you some questions. What do you usually do to incite inspirations? Where can we get the ideas? Can I have one or two opinions here? Come on. Yes. Oh. For so, me, well, from me, I uh, I find my inspiration with seeing a view, like a beautiful view, maybe um, sea or mountain that makes my inspiration come out. Mm -hmm. Like, like the scenery, beautiful yes. scenery. Yes. So nature, right? Beautiful nature. Pak Shafi'i. Yeah. Is it nature? Yes. Oh, who said that? Sorry. Usually, I read social. I I enjoy social media. So from social media. Okay. Shafi'i is not even. Some inspiration. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry, like, Luciana. Yeah, the Pak Safi hope is too, I guess. I said right, Pak Safi. I just know I just uh, I've just known it that Pak uh Pak Safi can get inspiration by doing uh, activity in social media, Pak Safi. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah friend, but I, I don't know about anything about you. Yes, yes when, uh, yeah. that, that's I new, like, right? Yeah, yeah. Inspirations from social media. Mm. Yeah, great. That's true, right. Pak. Yes, I agree, totally agree. So, I like, um, mm, yes, I like driving alone and thinking well, just yeah, driving. to find inspiration. Yes, 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 take a trip. <laughs> oh, yes, that's right, that's right. Um, you know, sometimes when driving, because you don't do other things, sometimes, because, of course, when driving, you're concentrating, but if it is like from campus to home, it is like automatic already, you know where to turn, right? So you let your mind wander and then have some ideas. Sometimes you see people on the crossroad and then uh, you observe them and then uh, you get inspiration to write something. And that's exactly watching the world go by, observing surroundings. That's the first thing that we can do to, to uh, incite our inspirations. So observe the people and the world around you. And this one is confirmed by studies, including uh, my, my study as well. So students learn from surroundings. I mean, got inspired by looking at or observing their surroundings. Observe the people and the world around you. And not only should you watch, you must also listen. People say righteous are eavesdroppers. <laughs> so um, that's uh, also mentioned by a student participant, uh, the one that I mentioned previously. Uh, she liked going home, uh, taking angkota, okay, angkutan umum, rather than riding her own motorcycle. Because there she could watch the people in the, the Angkota and listen to their conversations. And, and so she liked eavesdropping actually, but not just that, eavesdropping. And then after that, uh, she plays with her mind. Okay, and that's the, the next uh, thing that we, we can do. So this probably is Pak Shafi'i's. <laughs> Uh, strategy to incite inspirations, keeping an eye on the media, on the social media, newspapers, television, radio, SOSMAT. Uh, keep your eyes and ears open for the unusual stories and quirky programs, all kinds of things can capture imagination. And now, not just that, okay, this, uh, this works for creative writing and also academic writing, because in creative writing, then you let your imagination uh, wander. Okay, after you watch something, then uh, you can you know, all, all kinds of things can capture imagination, and uh, even obituaries, headlines, cartoons, uh, Facebook status, <laughs> like Pak Shafi'i probably you also observe people's. Uh, status yeah. <laughs> and then that gets you know you get inspirations from that and that one is also 
for academic writing, if you observe, you keep an eye on the media, you understand the phenomenon in the in you know, in our society. Uh, maybe you read the headlines here, but you have Chinese virus. One in four Asian American youths experience racist bullying. Report says, and you probably are interested. Then, oh, really? And then you go for exploring other articles related to that. And then you probably also want to observe the surroundings and then see what your students or what your friends, your classmates uh, respond to this. Uh, they, do they have the same uh, opinion uh, or prejudice uh, get related to Asian, Asian or Chinese um, students okay for example in here in in our context so this might trigger okay so keeping an eye on the media can trigger imagination as well trigger inspiration or ideas to uh, write something drawing from memory uh, that is uh, very uh, of course we do that often okay when we write we always look back into our past reimagining our experiences probably what we what we experience uh, the way we see our experience in the past is different from when we experience that at that time so we see it with different different uh mind you know i i have one uh, short story published in the collection of uh, short story by, uh, edited by Professor Alan Malley. The, the title is The Mysterious Shooting. It was actually uh, based on my experience when I was still in, in, in elementary school. I was probably around eight or nine years old or 10, I don't remember, but it, it was uh, when there was uh, Petros, if you, Hello. yes. And that, uh, I, uh, so we had at that time, there was a man, an old, I thought it, it was an old man, suddenly uh, early morning around five uh, in the morning, suddenly um, uh, walked into our garage and then just sit there trembling, asking for food. I was terrified because I was the one, you know, I, I took a bath very early and then when I wanted to hang my, uh, towel i saw him i thought he was a ghost mm. <laughs> so because he was like trembling and then in in you know in uh, the grass was a bit uh, dim okay not very well lighted mm. so i ran to my uh, parents uh, bedroom screaming and uh, then the day after so my mother tried to to tell me to explain that that man was hiding and then hungry and then wanted to, you know, asking us for food. So my parents give, give him like a, a tea in a plastic. Uh, and also like, I remember like a plate of rice and only tempeh at the time we only had that left. I remember my mom said that. But then the day after that, I went to the school with an uncle Ta. So, uh, and we stopped there in the middle because there was like a crowd at the side of the street. And then uh, we were informed that there was a guy killed, you know, like shot to death and, and like just put at the side of that street. It was very traumatizing for me because I saw that and I was like trembling, but there were some uh, bakul bakul okay, in the angkota and then they really concerned about me. So they told me not to, look at the uh, you know the body the corpse and then just uh, just uh, you know don't, don't look at don't look at the guy okay don't look at the corpse and so they were trying to comfort me so that that incident uh i was trying to retrieve that experience and put that in a short story but but I, with a different eyes you see now because i'm as an adult and see the experience so the way i tell that is you know with the an adult eyes mm. so uh that's an ex example this is what we can do or what students also do play what if suppose what might happen and play i wonder 
let your mind roam freely and uh, come up with possible answers. Let your mind wander, like just sit in a comfortable chair, close your eyes, let your thoughts follow any direction they want to go. Uh, if you hear a sound, you can concentrate to it. But playing what if and I wonder, those two works well. <laughs> those two really work for students to, you know, to trigger imagination. Because, uh, and that is, that can be, so this mind play is a continuation of observing something like in the, the Angkota and then see a couple and then they have uh, conversations and then this mind will play. This is the creative side probably playing with the mind. What if this happened? What if that happened? What, what happened actually? So it's like creating the story in your mind. Uh, if you want to uh, start with something that is already uh, there, you can learn as well from a favorite story or poem as a model to develop your own. So um, in this one, for example, I asked my students to read a red, red rose. Of, of course, uh, it's a very popular poem. My love is like a red, red rose. And it's using similes uh, very nicely. And it's quite easy to imitate. So I asked them to write a similar one. And this is one example. My love is like a tree. <laughs> so my love is like a tree, evergreen, as you can see. When you are loved by me, I can make you happy. So you see, my love is like a tree. I give you oxygen for free, even though you can't see my love is like a tree. <laughs> so this is, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to start with something. And when they were able to produce this, to write this one, they're happy because uh, it's, there is a sense of achievement that I can write a poem. And, and, you know, if you see, this is similar to Robert Burns, who is a famous writer. Uh, this one also a bit, but this is highly structured poem. So highly structured means uh, very strict. This is a philanel. I actually, I tried, do not go gentle into that good night and see if students can follow the pattern. And they did actually. So uh, this is very strict. If you go browse for philanel, the, uh, it has to have like five their sets. That sets me three lines in one stanza plus one quatrain, four lines in the last stanza. And the first line, do not go gentle into that good knot, is repeated alternately. And reach and reach against the dying of the light is also repeated alternately. And then the last stanza, you have this, do not go gentle into that good night, reach, reach against the dying of the light. So here, the students try to imitate okay, the pattern as well. Uh, and all the, at the end of a rainy day, we can't see the light. And the beautiful rainbow is the only one with us tonight. These are repeated alternately. And then the last line, at the end of a rainy day, we can't see the light. And the beautiful rainbow is the only one with us tonight. So sometimes giving, um, giving ourselves, okay, or students a challenge, okay, like constraints will uh, encourage them to explore the language further. It's something I, I was actually a bit skeptical. I mean, it is just difficult, okay? This is a difficult poem to imitate. I mean, the pattern, the structure, but they did. Okay, so uh, for students, you can also give yourself a challenge, okay, by doing uh, so, by, uh, you know, giving yourself a challenge like that. So actually, these are the things, important things uh, that we can do. Set a writing schedule. This is a number one advice for writers. Reserve a regular time for your writing, even if it's just 10 minutes a day. And keep a writing journal. Journaling isn't for everyone, but many writers find their journal uh, an invaluable source of ideas and details. So even when you just write that down, not for the purpose of writing, one day when you want to write and you, when you read through again your experiences, oh, this one is 
it's good okay this one is not bad for an idea so you you have the uh what is it um, kind of uh treasure box there that you can just pick later on read more when you read literature you absorb language and the techniques that make you a better writer separate writing from editing don't spend too much time getting too perfectionist right just write down uh first draft you you uh you know you don't uh, interrupt yourself with grammar so first draft can um during you're getting too perfectionist during the first draft can interrupt the creative flow so at first just just write okay just let the flow of your creativity let your first draft messy and then after that of course you can go back and fix it now the last one is is easier said than done of course <laughs> uh, so just say no to writer's block but okay. if you, it's easier said than done, right? But Shafi, right. <laughs> but if you feel uninspired, write anyway. Okay, so if you don't know what to write about, you can just tell about your day or describe someone you know. The point is just to get some words, any words on the page and put your brain in writing mode. Now, if you do this regularly, the ideas will come, I believe. So the second one is developing an attention grabbing opening how to do that you know like in stories such as in a murder mystery story for example usually the story starts with a flashback transporting readers to the midst of action so the story starts with high excitement so it's like you start by presenting the murder, the, the person being killed, for example, that's in the midst of action. And then after that, the rest of the story will go back and, you know, like uh, revealing what happened then. So that is uh, one, one uh, technique, okay, grab, to grab the reader's attention. Uh, hang on. Yeah. Now, if you, this is my question. If you are writing an essay about the absurdity of war, for example, that war is ridiculous, that, it's, that war is. So this is an argumentative essay and you want to say that war is ridiculous or absurd. How would you grab the reader's attention? Can you share your thoughts on this? Students, you may drop the uh, also your ideas in the chat box mm -hmm. if you want. Come on, students. Yeah. What would how would you grab the reader's attention if you want to write an essay about the absurdity of war? That war is absurd. That war is it doesn't make sense. How would you grab the reader's attention? Who? Who any? Maybe we can uh, present the number of casualties. Num number of casualties? Yes, statistics, right, Pa? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the statistics. And uh -huh. Give some uh, qualitative uh, description about the casualties of the war. Okay, yes. Uh, I'm interested in qualitative description, Pa. What, what, what do you mean by that? But statistics will be like numbers, but you also mentioned description. So, yeah. yes, but the, the misery experienced by exactly. the casualties yes. of the war. Yes, exactly. But thank you. So that's that's the first that's the first thing that we can do. So we can tell a brief incident in a person's life affected by war. Maybe inspired by pictures of wounded civilians, of life lost caused by wars. And this, uh, by telling this, uh, this is kind of narrative, okay? A short narrative telling a brief incident in a person's life affected by 
sure. This will grab your readers' attention because that's very close to uh, our life, you see. It makes your essay alive and it has a soul. That's what I mean by soul here. So it's not just, uh, okay, uh, there are three reasons why uh, war is absurd. First, this, second, that, third, that's the structure of usually an argumentative writing, right? But you can add more to that. You can, uh, if, if, I, if you start with that, I probably wouldn't be interested in reading it. But if you start with a brief incident in a person's life, you describe how war can hurt people's life and also, uh, you know, how many life loss caused by wars, then uh, you get my attention. The second possible way is by quoting a war poetry uh, about the horrors and psychological struggles faced by the soldiers. If you cannot write your own poem, you probably can uh, refer to some works already done. So like if you read Thomas Hardy's The Man He Killed, uh, it's about a soldier who said that, oh, if only I and he meet in a different occasion, we will just sit together and have a drink together. But because we meet in a war and he is my foe, he is on the other side, we are, uh, you know, like we, we stand face to face, I have to shoot, uh, you know, I have to shoot him down or he at me. Okay, so that's the only option. And there's no reason, he said, there is no reason for for that, the reason is only because that guy is on the opposite side. If they meet in a different occasion, they probably can sit together and be friends. Okay, so that's how absolute war is. So you can use a poem to deliver, you know, the, the, your stand at the beginning even. So grab the reader's attention with that. Or also, you can write your own poem, conveying your thought and feeling about war to state your opinion as a beginning. Okay, okay so and that, of course, it, it requires more efforts, but those who are interested in, in uh, you know, creative writing, you can do this. Okay, now, uh, this is just an example. I tried to find a, 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 some other examples, but um, uh, but couldn't because of the time limitation. So I will just use this one. Uh, this bit, okay, this is of course an academic writing, but I use an excerpt of a student's flash fiction. So flash fiction is shorter than a short story. And it's about um, uh, Under the Katapa Tree, that's the title. It's about, the story is about um, Tati Dance in Nusa Tenggara, in which these, the characters in the story that this student wrote uh, reveal that Tati dance is not just a dance, it's a dance to pass one's maturity. So only for boys and those who are willing, uh, who dare to do the, because it's a violent, it's a very, very, you know, you need courage because it's like a fight fight dance okay and if you do that it means that you're already an adult so it to assert maturity so you can use this bit to uh, illustrate as well to grab the first grab the students uh, the readers attention and have a say about that you can use your own poem to grab readers attention these are my students poems uh this one's mine but this one was uh, inspired by the pandemic. So uh, I asked them to write poems about how they felt uh, and what they thought about being, you know, uh, in the COVID-19 pandemic uh, last year. Uh, it was in 2020, I guess, two years ago. So uh, in prison, a wish of freedom, it's 2020. So you can use uh, your own poem for instance, if these students want to write uh, about an essay or an argumentative essay about the pandemic, about what we need to do or about the effects of the pandemic to students, for example, they can use this poem. 
you see how they feel about being online all the time this one is that this year i only felt two months and 13 days the rest i forget all i remember is the cell phone screen and so on and then i'm like a bird in a cage innocent but in prison okay so at the house but not home so so this is an expression of feeling or how they felt and this can be used as you know as uh, to grab the 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 reader's attention at the beginning to have a say about uh, your argument okay in your academic writing the third one this is the last one uh, that i'm going to talk about using metaphors and similes uh, of course i think you know uh, what metaphor is and what simile is creative writing often makes use of metaphors and similes sometimes extended ones uh, and we can bring soul to our essay by using metaphors and similes so uh, let me ask you first which is metaphor which is simile so the one this one's taken from the poems that i showed you just now uh this one is the one day when the dust settles and the period this period's goal has receded into memory i'll come to you and hold your hands and take you to where the dew can heal and this one it's 2020 the line is i'm like a bird in a cage which one is simile which one is metaphor Both yeah. metaphors and similes are figurative language or figures of speech that compare to unlike things. Okay, so metaphor uh, say one thing as another, while simile asks us to compare two unlike things and 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 ask us to see the similarity. So how about this one? This period still is this metaphor or a simile? Metaphor. Metaphor. A metaphor, yes. So this period school here is a metaphor of the COVID-19 pandemic. And then it's, uh, I'm now, a simile has a, a characteristic that it, it uses the word like or right. as. So I am like a bird, it's comparing herself with a bird in a cage, but using the word like, okay. so. You can actually also use this kind of uh, metaphors and similes in academic writing uh, to, you know, by asking, because using figures of, figures of speech can help readers vividly imagine, okay? So it is, we call it imageries or touch our senses and uh, this kind of language can touch the senses of the readers make it more alive not dry okay so let's give it a try uh there are this these are some examples of what we call micro poetry and other kinds of poems that fit the space to be presented in instagram uh this this is one example of a famous poet uh maybe some of you follow her as well rupi call uh, very uh, insta poet okay some people say insta poet so now because of the technology as well the development of social media as well then uh, people write poems to fit in an instagram this is often called a micro poem now this is what i will invite you to do uh, usually, usually we do that in in ten minutes only. Okay, hopefully we still. Uh, I have three three practices, but if we can only have one, that's fine. But okay. so we can just have this one. Write a poem that includes all of the words in one set. You may choose one of the two sets. So if you choose the first set, you have to include a tombstone, a yellow ribbon, and a dragonfly. The second one is a pitch dark room, a hug, and the smell of jasmine. Now, uh, would you please, uh, maybe students, can you take a snapshot of the words first? Because I'm going to show the Padlet okay. link, yeah. so you can, yeah. Uh, 
So later, please share uh, in on the Padlet page so we can see the results. Okay, so uh, help me, please, uh, if you can uh, do scan the barcode. Can you check whether it works? Does it take you to a Padlet page? Uh, maybe I should send the link. Okay, so I'll just uh, stop sharing first because I need to go to the link. All right, now I'm going to share that in the chat box. I mean, the link. And then I'm going to show again the words. Okay. So, can we have Pak Shafi'i? <laughs> Sorry yeah. uh, about the time, yeah. but can we have like five minutes or so? Okay. Yeah, let me check the Padlet. It should um, actually take you to this page. Yes, yes, we go. Okay, so you just you just uh, click this, okay, add and then type. Okay, good. Okay, so just to clarify the task again, please write a poem that includes all of the words in one set. So if you pick the first set, you have to include a tombstone, a yellow ribbon, and a dragonfly in your poem. So the three of them, okay? If you pick the second one, you can uh, include a pitch dark room, a hug, and the smell of jasmine.
one poem from dia bu Henny. Yes, Pak. Yes, I. Let me share my screen. Yes. Uh, do you see my screen? It's the page from the Padlet. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We have two poems here. And let me see. The choice is the. The second second set. <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you. Um, I guess this uh, both of them are students, right? Pa? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you for for Flow. sending or sharing the poems. Okay, let me read the first, or probably let's. Uh, uh, oh, we have one two three very good yes uh may i ask dia but dia apriliana are you there yes ma'am yes yes um would you please read your poem um okay, okay. yeah here i am in a peace talk room with a hug of loneliness where can i find the peace a smell of jasmine came my life Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, a pitch dark room. And then a hug. Okay. And the smell of jasmine. Good. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh mass is this mass floor fan feel? Why we cannot command? <laughs> Yo, ma'am. <laughs> I want to say I appreciate what you have written. <laughs> so would you please read the poem? How should I call you? Theo, ma'am. Theo, yes, must Theo, please. In these paths of dark room, still remember the smell of jasmine afternoon. I miss the day you hug. I miss you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sudah hampir malam minggu nih. <laughs> okay, thank you, Pio. And we have oh tomorrow. Let's have Davi, Davi Aditya Firmansia. Mas Davi, yeah. yes. Okay. Ancient stone. Ancient stone. It's made from a rock. People call it stone stone. Girl with yellow ribbon touch it. Remember the day her grandfather saw a dragonfly and said, If I pass away, I'll be a dragonfly. Mm, okay, good, thank you. You know, you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, this is the flow of creativity. So flow of idea, just let it like that. So don't be, uh, don't hesitate and don't uh, worry about that you don't choose uh, right words or that grammatically incorrect. So don't worry about that because you can go back and then uh, refine it again. Okay. What's important is the flow of your ideas, of your, oh, okay. um, in, you know, inspiration at the time. Okay. So thank you. 
Yeah. Okay, ma'am. Mm. I think uh, yeah. we have to stop the presentation and oh yes the next sessions, question and answer sessions. Yeah. All right. Yes. yes. Okay, <laughs> audience. Yeah. Please uh, come with your questions or comments to the presentations by Puheni. Come on. Please mention your name and your class. Yeah. Okay, ma'am, while waiting for the audience to give you questions and comments, may I have a question? Yes, of course, Pa. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in this digital era where uh, gadgets are widely available to everyone, yeah, uh, writing becomes uh, actually communication in, in written form is getting, getting easier and run faster. But my, my question is that uh, if we want to do serious, serious message related to creative writing, writing, yeah, uh, is it is it is it okay? Uh, we use and writing uh, for, you use, sorry, for creative you writing. Yeah. For creative writing, you use what? Pa? Sorry. Handwriting. Oh, handwriting handwriting uh oh in this digital era you mean yeah. yes uh i think i think there is nothing wrong with handwriting but because i i also like to you know i scribbled i like using note first i mean to draft if, if that's what you mean Okay, so it, it doesn't have to be like uh, like on computer or smartphone, probably because of the generations as well. But but I still like using pen and paper, and then I keep the drafts there as well. So now, if I want to share, then I type. Okay, but I do have the the drafts in in handwriting, especially if I have some thoughts in the journals. I prefer notebook rather than a file in the uh, computer. Okay. Is, is that answering your question? But, but of course, yeah. if now there are also digital literature, but so uh, there is an emergence of digital literature. And uh, if you want to, you know, keep up with the keep up with the students with the young generations, we have to be familiar with that as well. So the intention of digital literature is, of course, to showcase innovation and creativity in storytelling for digital media, okay, and new directions in contemporary literary practice informed by technology. So, um, of course, the kind of writing will be different. That's why in my creative writing class, I also use what we call flash fiction rather than short stories. So I'll just type that, flash fiction. And then I use micro poems. I ask them to write this because it fits the social media. And also there's another uh, chat story okay. yeah. or, or, or text story. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So okay. I guess uh, with students, uh, with students of young generations right now, we have to involve uh, digital technology to make them more interested in writing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, audience, any questions or comments? Yeah, I think this one. Uh, two more, two more. What things should we avoid when we want to start writing? From Mas Alfian Ahmad in the chat box, but Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What things should we avoid? Should I? Uh, where's Mas Alfian? Is, it, is are you here? <laughs> yeah. What things should we avoid when we want to start writing? 
Uh, I think if you want to write in English, then you shouldn't be worried about the language. That first thing. Okay, don't worry about uh, separate editing, writing and uh, drafting and editing. Uh, don't be too perfectionist. At, uh, okay, that's all right, Mas Alfian. I hope you can hear me. Yeah. So uh, I think what's important is to let your ideas uh, flow first. Okay. Don't worry about the language. Uh, you can refine the revise later. Sometimes students are too worried about uh, writing the first sentence because they don't want to make mistakes. They want it to be perfect, but it doesn't work that way. Even even famous writers they also draft. Okay, even some writers admit they uh, before coming up to the, the final one, they have to go through a lot of revisions okay. first. Yeah, so we have to separate between writing and editing. Editing, like yes. Like what you have in your presentation. Yes. I think there are more more questions from from yes. Tia, from Tia. From. Oh, oh Tia. yes. Okay. But Tia, uh, yes, I want to. I want to ask. I also have. I always have many things in my head, but it's hard for me to throw it into sentence or writing. Could you give me some tips to handle this? Yes. Yes, many, many uh, students also have the same uh, issue, okay? You have a lot of things in mind, but you don't know how to start. So that's what uh, I think that will work with the journal because uh, you have many things, but you cannot put that in one piece. So you just write down these bits or pieces in your journal, and then you go back again and see, oh, this one I can, uh, develop probably not into one single writing but you can develop this piece into that that piece into that also don't worry about that it's good that you have plenty of ideas okay some students even say that i don't have any ideas okay so if you have a lot of things in mind what you need to do is to organize the ideas uh, my suggestion is one is by writing them Okay, in the journal, don't worry about that they are not connected. Probably they are meant for separate writings. If you can connect, then you will come up with the uh, the ideas later, the how to connect them. Uh, does it help? Yeah. But dear, or do you want to ask further questions? And and one more thing, but dear, uh, read a lot. Okay. If you have many ideas in mind and then you read in the areas that you are, I mean, in the genre that you are interested in, then you will get inspired on how, how to present it, how to write that. For instance, how to describe a place. You probably have, you want to um, write a story, for example, with a detailed description of the place, but you don't know how. So just write down and use your you know, we are lucky because we are bilinguals or maybe multilinguals. Mm -hmm. Use all of them. Even uh, so, it's wrong to say that if you learn English, you cannot use other languages that you have. You have to. I mean, these are our our strengths. Okay, these are the skills that we have. That uh, people say this is the resources. Okay, so. Indonesian language, Japanese language, if you know other languages, those are resources that you have to use, explore. Even when the final result is in the English, for example, but in the process, you can use any languages to jot down ideas, to when you write in English, you can also read in Korean, for instance, just for inspirations. Okay, so multilingualism or bilingual uh, skills here is our resource so okay. make use of that and okay. and cultural resources as well explore our cultural and language resources okay. thank you ma'am okay. no worries uh, I, I think i have another question okay. yeah how uh, okay how to make a good condition while writing? I mean, sometimes feel burdened, but have many ideas, yes. Now, uh, uh, I have a student uh, once, uh, she told me that she could only write after midnight. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, 
you can find the time. Uh, sometimes time also uh, plays uh, a role here. Uh, what is the best time for our creativity? When do you feel most creative? Okay, sometimes we have that. For me, it's early morning. So yeah. around four, okay, like th sometimes 3.30, four until morning, those are fresh because I was not, usually I'm not tired. I already have some rest. And so when I wake up, then it's fresh and ideas can flow better. Okay, so you can find the best time. And of course, maybe no distractions. Some people need distractions even. So some, some, some uh, people need to play music aloud to get inspired. Some others want it to be very quiet uh, to get inspired to write. Okay, so um, find yours. And it's good that you have a lot of ideas as well. Okay, thank you. Ma'am, I'm sorry. Uh, actually, we can have longer discussions, but uh, the time is up. So I think uh, we have to stop now. Thank you, Thank for, you. Your, for your nice presentations. Thank uh, you. Good, good, good models and many tips. Yeah, how to make. Uh, creative writings and also thank you to the students who have uh, made good responses to to Henny's presentation and I love the poems yeah uh, in in my writing class usually I call a time writing mom uh, yeah, just yeah and but it is for academic writing yes but... especially uh, paragraph writing and essay writing. Uh -huh. yeah. yes, Here yes. we we have a time writing for creative writings, and some uh -huh. students are uh, were were able to complete the the poems. Yeah. Okay. And thank you for the questions. And I think uh, I hope uh, Bu Henis have answered your questions. And if you have further questions, or maybe you have want to share things, yeah, uh, you can see the the emails or the phone numbers in the what do you call it uh, CV I have shared in in the groups. Yeah, this don't hesitate to to contact Buheni for further questions yes. and yes, uh, the participants now ma'am are mostly from six semesters ah, and see. next semester uh, they are going to write their final project yeah, the ah, I see. Yeah. Yes. and i hope that helps uh, yeah and some of them yeah some of them from the proposed titles yeah are interested in in creative writings yeah ah, yeah that's great especially those who love qualitative research yeah yeah great. because i often told them that if you conduct qualitative research uh, usually you can complete the project uh, faster because you don't have to depend on administrative matters like permissions, scheduling, and so on and so on. So, so I think your presentation today uh, will be very useful for uh, for them to finish the the final project. Yeah, because uh, in the presentations, uh, it, it it is quite clear that academic writing should be backed up, should be supported by uh, creative writing as well. Yeah. Yes. It, yeah. So creative, creative writing and academic writings have to be uh, go together yeah, for uh, a good final project. Yeah. Yes. And I think 
that's all what I can say and I am sorry ma'am for any shortcomings during the the session and uh, I think let's may, may I have a, a word okay okay, yes. okay yeah. Yeah. Uh, I first I'd like to apologize because I uh, couldn't finish the whole materials no. uh, there are uh, two more uh, practices actually writing practices oh. but you can do it yourself i have uh, sent in the chat box the pdf uh, file so okay. the uh, slides but in pdf format so it's not too heavy uh, not too big hopefully it can be downloaded otherwise i will send it to ibu rusiana okay. and then uh, she can okay. forward it to all of you yeah. so yeah. I, I hope i hope it uh, what we do today helps a bit and maybe incite your inspirations to write yeah. for the coming semester as well thank yeah. you so much for having me uh, pak syafi'i ibu rusiana pak agung yeah. and you, all of you who are present today Okay. Thank you. Okay. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. We completed the sessions and Pak uh, Agung. Well, thank you very much for the inspirational and motivational presentation, Ibu Henny. And thank you, Pak Shafi, for handling the session. Well, ladies and gents, we come to the end of uh, our program today. Uh, but before we uh, end this session, uh, please uh, fill in uh, the attendance list that will be provided by uh, Mas Umar, yeah, the administrator, and also the survey link. So you have, you have two links to fill out. The first is attendance list, and the second is the survey on this program. Well, uh, coming to the the end of our program, let's sing a song of Hymna UMK. Well, ladies and gents, this is the end of our program organized by the English Education Department of FKIP, Universitas Maria Gudus, Stadium General and Workshop of Creative Writing with the theme, A Little Creativity for the Soul. And 
We would like to thank you so much once again to our special guest speaker, Ibu Henny Erawati M. Hum, PhD. And we'd like to thank you so much also for our lecturers and students who have taken the time to attend this great program. And we would like to see you again. Hopefully we can see you again in other occasions with uh, great academic events organized by our department. Well, we will give more time for students to fill in the attendance list and also the survey link. This is the end. Can Thank we you. take the photo for Agung? Excuse me. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Before we end, let's take the photo. Yeah. Let's take a photo first. Mas Umar, can you help us? Please, dear students, you may uh, open your camera and let's have a photo session. I'm ready. So let's say cheese. <laughs> Okay, let me count. Mas Umar can uh, please help us to take the picture. One, two, three, cheese. Thank you, Wendy. And then the second slide. Yeah, one, two, three, cheese. Okay. Thank you, Pak Agung. Bu Heni, thank you very much. Matanun, sangat you. ibu. Thank yeah. you so much for having me, Matanun. Ya, yeah, terima kasih. Ijin lift, ya, Bapak Ibu. Ya, yeah, baik, Ibu. Silahkan. Terima kasih. Salam buat Putri dan teman-teman, Ibu. Salam buat Bapak Ibu di Universitas Sanata Dharma. Bapak Ibu ini. Oke, okay, well. Ladies and gents, our beloved lecturers and students, this is the end of our program. Thank you. See you around. Goodbye.